Some slight technical difficulties this morning. Good morning everyone and welcome to our service this morning. This is traditionally our anniversary service and um, we thought it would be a nice idea if we have Archie back. And we're absolutely delighted to have both you and Fiona back uh, worshipping with us. I know you watch online every Sunday but it's an, a great pleasure to have you here. And I have to say it was nice watching everybody's reactions as you walked in the door and realised who was standing there. Uh, just a couple of intimations that were on the screen earlier that the usual Wednesday evening for prayers is open and the managers will meet on Monday evening via Zoom and the intimation there about Ladies Day at the General Assembly. I have a poster about it if anybody wants further information. Again, it's all online. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Now, go out of the way of doing services, so you'll have to excuse me, but there we are. It's lovely to be with you this morning, and it was very nice to be asked to be the guest preacher at uh, this anniversary service. As far as I can remember, this is the 229th service, uh, our year of services here in Calder Church. There's no one left from the first service, as far as I will know. As we come this morning, I thought we would have a a wee bit of an introduction before we come to worship, because um, we're going to share Psalm 100 this morning, which is a, a lovely psalm, and I've been looking at it over these past months, and I want to share it with you, or some thoughts this morning. We come to worship week by week. We come here. Can I ask you a question? When you come do you come with your minds full of thoughts? If you do, put your hand up. I think often we do. We come with the thoughts that are, are there. Rarely will we come really thinking of nothing at all. And for 229 years, people have been coming here with their minds full of different thoughts. Those thoughts could be personal thoughts. We may come this morning full of things that are in our mind, concerns perhaps, personal struggles, the responsibilities that we carry. Perhaps we come today thinking of others, those that are close to us, family or friends, workmates or neighbours, other folk that we think of. Perhaps we come today thinking of the world around us, in our minds, that word COVID, which we have never encountered until recently. Or the elections and their results. Or perhaps our thoughts are in India, or the Yemen, or Syria, or somewhere in another part of the world. But so often, when we come to worship, or even when we come to prayer, our minds are full of thoughts. We come too often aware that those concerns that we carry are often beyond our own resources. What can be done? And so our minds busy, full, anxious, or fearful. We, like generations of people, have gathered here, and we come today to gather to worship God. And with that thought, we come to focus on Psalm 100. And it begins, I hope, that we would focus, despite all that our minds are carrying, on God himself. The third verse of Psalm 100 says, very simply, know that the Lord is God. There's another wonderful psalm, and we know the verse well, be still and know that I Know that the Lord is God. And this morning as we celebrate all these years, as we come to be together, as we worship together on this special day, we focus on God. And our opening hymn, as we come to worship, is a hymn that reminds us of God in different ways. How great. Oh. 
I can say I've thoroughly enjoyed watching the services over these past months online, and haven't you all done well? But God indeed has blessed the services that uh, I've been able to share with, and I'm sure will be with us today. And thank you for that lovely hymn, uh, musicians and singers. Let's come to prayer. Let us give thanks to God. Lord, as we come today to worship you, to praise you, well, we give you thanks and praise your name. How great indeed thou art. Lord, week by week as we approach you in worship, often when we come in prayer, our minds are full of thoughts and concerns for ourselves, or others, the world and its people. Sometimes we come worrying, anxious, unsure, or weak, or simply busy. 
And so this morning, may we indeed be still. May we stop a while and simply come into your presence and know that you are God. The God who is almighty. The God who made the universe in all its amazing vastness and wonder and beauty and power. For Lord, you are a mighty and wonderful God. And in our smallness, as we come before you, you remind us again today that as we stop and look to you and know you, and that we will better understand that you are God and that you are our God. The Father God who is always near us and concerned for us, who seeks to care for us, the Saviour who emptied himself and bore the pain and death of Calvary for us. The Holy Spirit that touches us where we have need. You touch us deeply and move us. You encourage us when we're low. You open our eyes and hearts to see you as you are. To see you, Lord, and know you and love you and trust you. And so we come today and thank you for this opportunity to worship and to praise you. That we might know you better. That we might more fully understand that we move and live and have our being in your presence and in your care. So bless us and be with us and lift our hearts as we're gathered today. And we pray together now in the words of the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we're going to hear that wonderful psalm, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So we come this morning focusing on God. But what is God like? I don't know if you've ever thought of that. What is God like? I know we have, uh, I suppose, latent memories of the past when we were little when we had images of God. But what is God like? Well, this wonderful psalm helps us with that. It shares three attributes of God. What is God like? Firstly, it says, and it reminds us, that God is good. The Lord is good, says the psalmist. And what a wonderful thought that is. I don't know what you've been up to in the last seven months, um, since uh, uh, we left. Um, but obviously we went to Troon and uh, then they locked down. So it's been fascinating to be down by the coast. And uh, we have a, a garden there that needed a lot of attention. There was nothing else to do. So I have spent much of the past seven months laying slabs in four different areas. I've gone on to be in a bit of a bricky. And... Uh, doing all manner of things that my late father would have been amazed at, uh, that his hornless son 
would attempt anything like it. And the other day I was looking into the garden and the, one of the areas that I slabbed, which I suppose for me, really, uh, most folk look and say, gosh, you've done quite a good job. More than amazement, I think, than anything else. And I was thinking of that as I looked out, because there was the slabbed area, another one to the top, another one on the other side. And as I looked at those slabbed areas, I could just about pick out every fault and flaw and mistake. You see, other folk look and think it's good. I don't know how often you do the same. You look and you can just spot the mistakes. You know where they are. Other folk might not see them. And that came to my mind as I looked at the bird feeder. And onto the bird feeder came a chaffinch. And I sat and I looked at that wee bird pecking away. And it flew away. And then came a robin in all its beauty and perfection and pecked away at the fruit. And then I thought of a psalm. The Lord is good. You see, I can see all my faults and flaws in the work I have done. But in the beauty of those two wee birds, I could see the wonder and the goodness of God. And of course, looking beyond at the trees and the sky and all the rest, and of course, in that wonderful hymn that we sang, or we, uh, we've heard, there is that sense in the beauty of creation and that knowledge that God is good. But his goodness isn't confined to this creation and the world that he has made. The God, God is good as we read it in his words. If we want to understand what goodness is, we will see it in God as we listen to him, as we look to his son, as God touches us. We understand what goodness is. We can't make it up for ourselves. If we truly want to know what is good, we find it in God. And you know, when I looked at those slabs and can see the flaws, when I see the what. I know that it's not just the slabs in my life that are faulty. We all know the things in our lives that are not right. Mine, yours, others, the world, the society in which we live in, the nations of the world. But in all the complexity and the things that we struggle with, the first thing we understand is that God is good. And if we want to know what is right and true, we will only find that as we find it in God. And then the psalmist says this, his love endures forever. What a thought that is, and what a blessing. As we've gathered today, coming with all our concerns and thoughts, God is good, but his love endures forever. And I could go on about that, and we could all go on about it. But simply as we look to Jesus, we understand what that means. His love endures forever. The Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. The Son of God who gave himself for us. The Savior who died to bring us forgiveness and set us free. The risen Lord who brings to us love and life that endures forever. The Lord who will come again and take us home where we can live with him as we put our trust in him and believe in him. God is loving, truly loving, and his love And thirdly, God is faithful. His faithfulness, we're told, continues through all generations. We know that God is with us. And he's always with us. 
and he reaches out to us and the Spirit of God reaches to each of us and speaks to our hearts and our souls, there to comfort us, lifting us up when we're low, giving us that wisdom that we need, surrounding us with love and compassion, sometimes giving us a shield, and moving us to love and care and be his people, to seek what is right and do what is right. God is faithful and he's always with us. He'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. What is God like? This God that we come to worship today. God is good, he's loving, and he's faithful. And as we come in prayer to think of our needs, the needs of others, the needs of the world, to bring our concerns to God, God is with us. And Janie will help us to do that now. Let us pray. <clears throat> we thank you for all that we have and know that there are so many hurting and needy people in our world today. We bring them to you and ask that you would bless them, help them and heal them. We ask that you intercede for them, fulfilling their needs according to your will. We also pray that you would use us to help them in any way we can. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities we have to bless others in need. Help us not to be selfish. Help us to share. All that we have is yours. Your son travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. And at your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Help us all to maintain the vigilance and understanding necessary to keep us safe for the duration of this pandemic. We remember all those who give of themselves so that others may be helped. Doctor, nurse, healthcare worker, all the ancillary staff, emergency services, teachers, school staff, childcare workers, mental health professionals and countless others. May they receive your protection. Heal those who are sick with the virus and be with their families. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. And we bring to you those who have lost loved ones due to this virus. Console them and grant them peace. And we remember especially at this time the people of India where the rate of infection soars. We pray for the world leaders who bear the heavy responsibility of providing for their populations especially as the coronavirus pandemic continues. Give them the wisdom to know what is best and the courage to make right decisions. Help them act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. We pray for the leadership of our nation after the elections during this past week and ask that you surround them with godly advisors. And we pray that they will focus on the issues we face as a nation. God of peace, watch over those who lead us. Fill them with wisdom, patience, insight and mercy and help them to lead with kindness and strength. We pray for your church, which day by day gathers to praise you and to hear your word. We pray for all our Christian brothers and sisters worshipping around the world in all places, rural and town churches, great city cathedrals and on the internet. And we ask for your protection for all those persecuted as a result of their faith. We pray for our church here that we might grow in faith and confidence that God is present among us. We pray for all who share in the ministry of this community that they bring compassion and understanding to all those in need. We ask that our village will grow in faith and hope and love through a deeper relationship with you. We ask for your care and guidance for our vacancy committee as they seek your will in looking for a new minister for us. Please show each of us 
the part that you want us to play in our church life. We thank you for all those who help in our local community to help it run smoothly because of their jobs, voluntary work or neighbourliness. Bless our neighbours and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. Encourage us to constantly pray for those we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We bring to you the sufferings of those that we hold dear, the pains of the sick, both at home, in hospital or care homes. We pray for those in our community for whom this day will be long and painful, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, and especially for all those who care for them during their struggles. We pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversary we recall. Help them to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the church family around them. We bring to you now the names of all those dear to us who need your help, your care and your love. We ask you to draw close to all of those mentioned so that they may be aware of your healing presence and we ask you to provide your peace and comfort for them at this time. Send us out in the world today mindful that as witnesses and servants we should make known in every place we visit and bear witness to the gospel with faith, acts of faith and hope and love. Hear our prayers today, Lord. Amen. Well, we have a little music and some images uh, to allow us space to reflect. Know that the Lord is God. He's good, he's loving, and he's faithful. So says the psalm. And more too. For he, it says, is the Lord who made us. Well, that we understand. But it goes on to say, and we are his. Now there's a thought. We are his people. It was a wonderful thought. And we are the sheep of his pasture. I think it's still out there. I presume the painting is still on the wall, is it? Of the shepherd, I hope. Someone have a look. 
with it. Is it still out there? It is. Good. You should be able to see it from there. There's a wonderful picture out there, which, where's Elizabeth? I think it was a gift from the Sunday school, I think, many, many years ago. Have a look at it on the way out. No, don't take too long, because we're not allowed to wait too long, but have a wee look. There's a lovely image of a shepherd holding a sheep. And there is a lovely image of the fact that we are the sheep of his pasture. We are his. Not only is God a loving God, he loves us. We're his people. He cares for us. He loves us. He looks after us. And in all these things, says the psalmist, we're moved then as we gather weak. And just think, for almost 230 years, people have come here to worship God, to sing God's praises, giving thanks for all, for the simple reality that God is God. Not a distant God, but the God who loves us and cares for us and holds us as his own. And the psalmist in that wonderful verse says, no that the Lord is God. And that word know is very significant. Know in your mind, yes, but know in your heart. Know believing and trusting. Knowing that God is God and that God is with us. And the other aspect, of course, of this psalm is just pure joy. If we know the Lord, and we know the Lord is God, then we will know the joy of the Lord. As we stop and listen and reflect, so we're moved as we come to worship to rejoice. And Psalm 100 is full of joy. Now, let me ask you a question. When did you last shout? Anyone? Can you remember when you last shouted. Well, there's the odd mother here, so they must remember. Go on, Lorna, when did you last shout? Friday. Friday. <laughs> there we are. So we shout. Why would we shout? To get attention, that could well be the case. Waking someone up. Waking someone up. Well, that's a thought. Sometimes we shout to warn folk. I'm sure. Come on. To be heard. To be heard, you do. When did you last shout with joy? I'm tempted to ask Bob, when did Gladeside ever do anything that gave you the opportunity to last shout? It's a funny thing, isn't it? And yet the psalmist says, shout the Lord, all the earth. Isn't that a wonderful thought? You ever thought when you came to worship, I'm going down to the church to have a good shout to the Lord, and not to shout at the Lord, to shout to the Lord in worship. I'm tempted to ask you to shout, but I don't know about you, I find it difficult to shout, isn't it? And yet there's a psalm. Worship the Lord with gladness. That's a thought too, isn't it? We worship the Lord sometimes quite somberly, to be honest. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. That's wonderful. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I don't know about you, but my own be shouting, to be dancing, to be bouncing, to be singing in praise of God because he's good. He loves us and he's loving. He's faithful always. What reasons are there to worship, to praise? For 229 years, people have gathered here to worship God and to leave this place having worshipped God and been lifted in their hearts to go back into the world beyond their concerns and their anxieties and worship 
knowing that God holds us in his hands, is faithful to us, cares for us, and will never let us go. Because the Lord is God, and he has done wonderful things. And as we go out, Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come today, we come in praise and thanksgiving and in worship. Lord, we arrived aware of our concerns and the needs of ourselves and others. But we have come to you that you might speak with us and bless us. We've come to be reminded of your goodness, of your love for us, of your faithfulness. And Lord, we leave with worship in our hearts. For Lord, you are our God, and we know you. We thank you for this place of worship. And we thank you for the parish church of the past, the West Church, Our Lady, Old Simon, the Gospel Hall, the Collegiate Church, that people have worshipped you in many places in this community. And will so yet. And Lord, as we leave this place, bless us in our worship and in our service, that we might know you and that others might know you, and that we might desire ever to praise you, to thank you, to be glad, because you are our God. Go with us and bless us. Bless this fellowship in the years to come with all the questions and concerns. We pray indeed for a new minister. We pray indeed for people serving you. We pray indeed for a community that will hear of you and come to know you and love you and worship you. And Lord, go with us and bless all those on our hearts but we praise you because you are our God and we are your people and we thank you in Jesus name Amen we're going to close with part of Psalm 100 as we sing our, hear that wonderful hymn I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad.
And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and be with us today and forevermore.